Yeah. Thank you so much there for that update. Now, as the country uh, commemorated Youth Day yesterday with promises to do more to uplift young people, unemployment data is expected to be released in a few days. Uh, the Center for Social Development and Enterprise has run a survey which shows 6.5 million people between the ages of 15 and 34 are out of work. Anne Benstein is the Executive Director for the Center for Development and Enterprise, and she joins us now via Skype. Ms. Benstein, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for making the time. When you hear uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa in his Youth Day message challenging the youth to take charge of the process of reviving the economy post-COVID-19, and on the other hand, your report says we're not asking the right questions, how do you interact with that challenge? Well, Desra, um, good morning. I'm not quite sure what that challenge meant. I was also a bit surprised by it. Um, I think we have to look to South Africa's entrepreneurs to get firms going and to, to start expanding again and to survive this terrible situation. I think young people, many of whom, most of whom have come out of very bad schooling, have very little experience of the world of work, are not going to be the entrepreneurs we should look for in this crisis. I think that we have to change the environment in which our companies are operating, make it more easier to hire young people, and also look at our education and skills system, which is really failing young South Africans in very many respects. What are the wrong questions that your study asserts are being, uh, we are asking in relation to job creation? So I think for many people, they look at the youth unemployment and, and they say, how can we help these people either in rural South Africa, where they are, which is the wrong approach. You need to Think hard about where there are the most opportunities for young people in our country. We're an urbanizing country, and the most opportunities are going to be in urban areas, particularly the bigger cities, which are the places where the most jobs are created. So that's the first thing. The second is people want young, young unemployed South Africans to be entrepreneurs. This is completely unrealistic. These are young people who've come out who know very little about the world of work. You and I know how much we learn on the job when we work in an organization, and that's the international experience, that you, you go and work somewhere, you learn that organization, that sector of the economy, and then maybe you hate your boss and you think you can do something <laughs> more cheaply, more efficiently on your own, and then you go and start a small business and hopefully it will grow. Um, but to think that people who have no experience of work can become successful entrepreneurs seems to us to be a strategy with very little return. South Africans also put a lot of effort into helping young people understand where jobs are, how to apply for a job, and this is good. And you can move young people to the front of the queue for jobs, you can move them into the queue for jobs, but unless we are creating additional jobs, the length of that queue will not decline. So you've got to be very realistic about the scale of the challenge South Africa faces, and that relates to how we are going to get much faster growth in this economy. That will require a number of bold reforms by the government and also how we become a much more labor-intensive economy. We have to make it more attractive for employers to hire young people. And that requires other reforms to our labor market, to the collective bargaining system, which allows small firms particularly to hire young people, to get rid of them if they don't suit that, the company's environment well or they don't perform well, to get rid of them easily so that you're more 
you'll take the risk on a young person because you know if it doesn't work, you can try somebody else. And that's not how our system operates at the moment. And we asked some of our viewers to take part in this conversation this morning. And what you've just spoken about, making it a more labor-intensive economy, came up in some of the tweets with people saying we need to go back to that system of having factories that are in our local areas. How do we encourage or how, how do you impress upon government to, to be more bold about this and, and, and take uh, steps that, that will yield results? A very good question. Um, I think many people think that if you that if you don't have, have high pay, that if you don't have, let me put it this way, many people think that we want really decent and high paying jobs for young people who have their first experience of work. And that is a mistake for many people with very few skills. The truth is that the alternative to, to high paying jobs, to low paying jobs, is not high paying jobs, but no jobs at all. And South Africa as a, as a key it demonstrates this over the last 15 years or so. Um, so we are advocating that South Africa, like almost every other developing country, encourages factories to set up that use first-time workers. Um, so these will be low-skill jobs and necessarily with low pay. But this is better than no pay at all. And... What's happened in China, in South Korea, in Hong Kong, in Vietnam today, in Bangladesh today, is that people are getting jobs in factories, producing for the global market, making your and my T-shirt, and slowly both the factory and the jobs start to improve. But we can't hope to get high-paying jobs with people who've never worked before. So we've got to think differently about manufacturing and open a portal for low-skill manufacturing in this country. And maybe with the disruption of supply chains globally, South Africa can find a niche where we can be competitive. And we've been advocating this for quite a long time. We have sunk investment in Kucha, in, in Port Elizabeth. We think this could be an ideal place to test out our attractiveness as a place to attract investment for low-skill manufacturing in South Africa. But that requires a willingness to try something new, and that will require some reform, not all that much, but some reform in our labor laws. Of course, there are young people, and the numbers that you show on your report here are staggering and really scary. 52% of the workforce in this group unemployed, 6.5 million people between 15 and 34 who would take a job if offered uh, don't have one. Um, your report also concludes to say that as commendable as it is that President Sora Ramaphosa has prioritized youth employment, he shouldn't be distracted by the fight against COVID-19. What do you mean? Well, in February this year, in the State of the Nation address, the president made a series of interventions on youth unemployment one of his top priorities. We welcome that. That is important and good news. The key question to ask is what has happened um, during the COVID emergency, which is going to be with us for a long time. So... We know what the one thing we know in this period of uncertainty is that unemployment will increase and that will affect young people as well. So the numbers, stunning as they are now and devastating as they are, will only go up. And we're really saying that the focus on doing something about growth and youth unemployment must continue. We're urging him to do that. But then we're also saying that South Africa must stop fiddling at the edges. We must stop tweaking. We must stop small projects. We must stop 
thinking that we can deal with the massive scale of over 6 million pre-COVID young people who, have, who would like to work but cannot find a job, we have to deal with this issue on scale. So we've got to get lots and lots and lots of economic activity happening so that more and more young people can get jobs. And the real test of the president's interventions or the country's interventions are can we turn the dial? Can we make sure that the numbers are starting to go down and that we're providing hope to, for young people to get into the labor force and to start participating in the world of work. That is the key challenge, and that's what we're hoping that the, the president will continue the thrust on youth unemployment, but it has to be linked, not separate, in a separate sort of compartment. It has to be linked to how we get faster growth and how we get more labor-intensive growth in the country. I like how our conversation is not in a vacuum. You gave a practical example of how Kuha can be one of the places that starts to look at how to bring in young people. Just give us a sense, Anne, and this is to conclude our conversation, of the national picture in the different provinces. Where can... Uh, where, where is the low-hanging fruit where act activations can start immediately? Everybody asks me that, and everybody's looking for, if you like, low-hanging fruit. When it comes to unemployment, we've tried to do the easy things. We've tried to avoid the big choices for the last 10 years. We've had summits. We've had discussions. We've had promises. We've had all sorts of things. And the truth is this, the numbers of unemployed have just gone up. We are suggesting let us experiment with changes in the labor market. Collective bargaining should not be extended to small businesses who are not party to negotiations. And in Port Elizabeth, We've already invested in Koha. What about setting up a special economic zone designed for low, low skill, labor intensive manufacturing? That's our specific proposal. And there are a number of reasons why PE is a good place. But we shouldn't do that all over the country yet. You should change the laws and the regulations, but they aren't simple, quick projects. And it's really important. We keep diverting our attention in this country from the hard policy choices that we have to make if we are going to get any progress. And we won't get progress if we avoid those. So the real priorities for the country are to take the tough decisions to get this country attractive for investors again. And we keep going over what those are to also take the decisions to open up our labor market so that it is encouraging to employers to employ inexperienced new workers, mainly young people. And then in addition, we're saying let's experiment as quickly as possible with a special economic zone in the Eastern Cape designed to attract investors in low-skill, labor-intensive factories for export. Thank you very much uh, for talking to us this morning. Anne Benstein is the Executive Director for the Center for Development and Enterprise, talking to us about a survey on youth unemployment.